Hi there. This is a video on curve sketching, and it's the type of curves when you're going to be using derivatives. It's fairly advanced. If you're looking for sketching a curve of something like y equals x cubed plus 2x squared, what we call a polynomial function, then this video or part one of this video is going to be for you. You're going to want to look for harder curve sketching questions, which I'm in the process of making, if you have a function like this fractions and has asymptotes and things like that. So if you're looking at a question that has uh, one x squared minus 3 and x squared minus 4, something on the top and the bottom, uh, those are going to be more involved, having more steps than you see on the screen in front of you, and that's not on this particular video. Just giving you a heads up before you start. Okay, so the methods that we generally use in, in a lot of courses is where you need to try and figure out what the domain of the function is uh, before you go. It's just a proper way to look at it. But if your functions are easy, like the ones I showed you, where it's just there's no denominators, there's no fractions, it's just a polynomial function, then that's not going to be something we have to consider because the points, you'd be looking for points that make the function undefined parts that make the denominator zero, no denominator, don't worry about it. Anything that makes a radical negative, no radicals, don't worry about it. So the domain really is going to be all x values. So we're not going to really consider domain uh, when we look at it. Certainly the first part where things are going to get hairy is where we try and find the intercepts of a graph. That's where we want to find both the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Of course, to get x-intercepts, we will make y equals zero. To find y-intercepts, we will make x equals 0 and do the appropriate solving. We'll probably have to use long division to get through this and uh, a quadratic formula if you can't factor it. Once we're done with the intercepts, we know some points the graph goes through. Now we need to know when is it going up and when is it going down or what are the intervals of increase and decrease. So the way you get that, we'll calculate the derivative f prime set it equal to zero and find things called the critical points. The points where it's equal to zero are the points where it's not going up and going down, but the points where it hits a maximum or a minimum point on a graph. Those are the critical points where it stops going up, hits a zero slope, and starts going down. So that would be a maximum, and a minimum is where it would have been going down, hits a zero, and then is going up. Nice drawing. So, in each of those cases, uh, we need the derivative to get that done. So we'll find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and then we'll use a number line or an interval table and try and find out where's the slope positive, because where the slope is positive, the function is climbing. And wherever the, if your function's like this, wherever the slope is negative, the function is falling. Where the slope is zero is where it's in between the points where it's doing that, so it's the maximum points. All right, this will be more clear as I go through it. And once we have those intervals of increase, we will be able to very quickly ascertain whether it's a maximum or a minimum. Once you know the maximum endpoints and the intercepts, you're well on your way to drawing a picture of what that would look like. So I'll see where my time is. Just spent three and a half minutes yakking. Let's start in with a question. So if this is the graph that we wanted to take a look at, it's 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3. There's nothing exotic. I don't see any square roots. I don't see any fractions. Therefore, my domain is all real numbers. Don't have to really consider it. We just move on from domain. Now, we want intercepts. To find our intercepts, if I want the x-intercepts, I set uh, y equal to 0. And if I want the y-intercepts, I set x equal to 0. Well, that's by far the easiest to find, because if you make x 0, you have 2 times 0 cubed, 5 times 0 squared, 4 times 0, minus 3. So that answer is minus 3. So my y-intercept, when x is 0, y is negative 3, therefore 0 comma minus 3 is a point on the graph. That is the y-intercept. x-intercepts are going to be a bit trickier to solve. We have to take our original function here, the y equals 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3, and set y equal to 0. 
and now solve it for x. Well, this is a tough one to factor, so I'm going to use polynomial division. So we look at, I have other video on this one, we look at a function, you try numbers like positive 1 or negative 1, positive 1 or negative 3. You look at factors of this, see which ones make it equal to 0, and then you know where what to start with with your polynomial division. I will try x equals 1 and see what happens. 2 onto 1 cubed, 5 onto 1 squared, minus 4 times 1, minus 3, ends up being 2 plus 5, minus 4, minus 3, that does indeed equal 0. That tells me that when x equals 1, that is a root of this equation. So, x minus 1, if you took that over, x minus 1 is the factor of, an, of the equation. So, I will take and now do polynomial division where I know x minus 1 is a factor of 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3. And this step's a polynomial division. You ask yourself, how many times does x go into 2x cubed? And it goes in 2x squared times. I've got a video of this again. Like I said, you can, if this is really too fast for you, you can go back and look at that. 2x squared onto both terms would give me 2x cubed minus 2x squared. We then subtract. That leaves 0. And when you take 5 minus a minus 2, you get 7x squared. Drop down the minus 4x. How many times does x go into 7x squared? It goes in 7x times. The 7x multiplies on both terms. 7x squared minus 7x. Subtract those two terms, and we get 3x. Drop down the minus 3. How many times does x go into 3x? Positive 3 times. Multiply the positive 3 on both things. 3x minus 3. You have a remainder of 0. Thus, and you always try and use that word, people just think you're smart. Thus, x minus 1 and 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 are two things that multiply to give that original function. So we're close to being able to find factors, which means we're close to being able to find intercepts. Now, we still have to factor this down just a little bit more. 2x squared plus 7x plus 3, if you were to factor that, we look for numbers that multiply to give 6, yet add to give 7. Numbers to me, 6 and 1. So I will keep my x minus 1 here. Decompose 7x into plus 6x and plus 1x. Keep the 3 the way it was. Now, this is the method of decomposition for factoring. 2x squared, forgot to write it. 2x squared plus 6x has a common factor of 2x, leaving x plus 3 behind. There's a common factor of 1 on that, leaving x plus 3 behind. So I could rewrite this as x minus 1, 2x plus 1, and x plus 3. So these three things, setting them equal to 0, these are my three factors, so my three roots would be x equals 1, x equals negative a half, and x equals negative 3. So 1 comma 0, negative 1 half comma 0, and negative 3 comma 0 are all three x-intercepts. I will stop this and start the ne next section on part 2 of the video.